am full of anticipation. The Pixel 7a should be announced on May 10th with its shipping in June. So soon, if you are looking for a Pixel, you will have one more to choose from in the under $1,000 market. The A series from Google tends to be the budget competitor, but it usually comes with really nice high-end features. So a lot of people are wondering if this will be a better choice than the Pixel 7, which released in fall of 2022. So let's compare the Pixel 7, which I just reviewed on the channel, with the upcoming Pixel 7a. Now all of these specs are based on current leaks and rumors, so if anything changes on May 10th, I will list those changes as a community tab post and a pinned comment down below. Let's go ahead and start with the aesthetics, the size, and the style. The 7 came in these three colors, but the 7a will come in white, gray, and this really pretty sky blue colorway, which matches rumors of some new blue Pixel Buds Pro. Now, while the 7a looks extremely similar in terms of design to the Pixel 7, it will have smaller dimensions and it will come with a display size of 6.1 inches, but we are seeing reports that the screens will be identical in terms of refresh rate and resolution. It is likely to be water resistant at IP67, ever so slightly lower resistance than the Pixel 7. Now, in terms of construction and material, materials instead of the premium glass back like we have here on the Pixel 7, the 7a should be plastic or polycarbonate, though that might be a perk for some folks if you are worried about glass scratching or cracks. Not to mention, plastic is lighter too, so if you want a smaller form factor and a lighter weight, that could be a bonus. Now, I am expecting wireless charging based on rumors, though it will probably be a slower standard and a battery at less than 5,000 milliampere hour. Now, I am really surprised by the rumors about wireless charging because the A series, as y'all know, has never had wireless charging before. So this is a quality spec that a lot of people will probably go for. In terms of the camera, these will likely be a front facing one at 13 megapixels and a dual rear camera setup at 64 megapixels and a 13 megapixel ultra wide. The 7A should also come with the same Tensor G2 chipset, but only come with 128 gigs of storage and eight gigs of RAM. That will not do the job for any of my use cases of like editing 4K footage or storing way too many videos locally for my YouTube shorts, but that may be totally fine if you are not a content creator. Now, I don't know if this is going to be true or not. We probably won't see face unlock on the new 7A, but I would love to be wrong here. The more convenience you offer for security, the better position that consumers will be to secure all the things. Some recent rumors are speculating that face unlock will be included, but it will probably still be 2D, which means that you have to use your fingerprint sensor for application unlocking and payments. I also don't know if we will see the built-in VPN on the phone like we have on the 7 models or Bluetooth or NFC. I haven't seen any reports on those specs, so I don't know like what kind of Bluetooth or NFC we will get if those are included in the Pixel 7a. Now currently the price of a Pixel 7 is $599, but I have seen this thing drop as low as $450 unlocked. At this point, I would not recommend a 6a since the new 7 a will get an extra year of support, upgrades, and security patches. It will also come with Android 13 out of the box, though we will probably see an Android 14 upgrade very shortly after that. The 7a reportedly will cost around $500, which means that it's going to increase in price from the 6a. If that is true, that price is very, very close to the 7. Now, of course, I am curious if any of these leaked specs do end up being true. We should find out soon. If the price really is 500 bucks, I might recommend people who need an upgrade right now to hit up the 7 for the bigger battery, the faster charge time, and the larger storage size options at $100 difference. If that does not break the budget, that might be a better option. I will report on the final announced phone when it does come out. Hopefully I will get one in studio to test for y'all as well. If there's anything in particular that you want me to focus on in testing, do let me know down below. I'm more than happy to check it out for you. Check out these videos if you'd like to see more on the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.